So in the first lecture, we ended up getting the zeros for y and x. And this is what uh, we got. Uh, so for the first constraint, we made y0 and x was 3. And then when we made x0, y was 3. And so the same with constraint number two, we made y0 and x was 9. And when we made x0, y was 9. And for constraint number three, when we made y0, x was 0. And so if we made x0, y could also be 0. And in that case, we had to find a value because we don't want to have zeros all through we can take the first one but not the second and so we decided to take a value and so the next thing we're going to do is to create the the, the graphs and uh, we'll start by creating the graph for c1 and then we'll come to c2 and c3 so in this case let me highlight these values for c1 and after that, then click um, Insert. And then here we are looking for the scatter. And so we have scatter plot here. And uh, with the scatter plot, we want to select um, the scatter with straight lines and markers. Please don't select this one or this one or the other. Just select the scatter with straight lines and markers. When you select this, you can see that we have this line which joins the, the points, the X and Y. However, all we have to do is just put your mouse within the chart and right click and then select data. When you select data, if you're using math, you will see this chart. And um, with math, all we have to do is to change the name of the series to be uh, the line. That line is for C1 and um, we'll do for C2 and C3 so that we can get the feasible region. Now, if you're using Windows, all you're going to do is uh, somewhere here you will find Edit, and then you edit series names and series values. But here, all we, we can do is just type the name, which is C1, and that's what we have here. And that is our first series, I mean series 1. And uh, you see these values, just remove them and uh, then um, go back to the table here you can see that our x values are three and zero so select three and zero that is for x1 now also remove this for y or to get the y values make sure that you remove everything and go back to y select zero and 12 so that means we are selecting y values and so that is all with uh, constraint one and um, in this case if you click ok then um, you will get out of this but just add uh, you can add c2 and c3 if you are using mac but if you are using windows you can click ok and uh, then you can keep on adding uh, the C2 and C3. So I'm going to click on plus and so we're going to add series number two and so this one has to go. Now series number two, click OK, series number two is C2 and then we have to put X, uh, X values and Y values. So X values for C2 will be selected 9 and 0 and for y we will select 0 and 9 and then we're going to add so if you add you'll get series number 3 
and series number three should be C3. And then we're going to select X values. X values will be zero and 10. And then Y values, make sure you remove this. Y values will be zero and eight. So we are done with C1, C2, and C3. So all you have to do now is just to click OK. When you click OK, you will see that uh, we have um, this line, which is C1. And I believe this should be C2. And that one will be C3, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me click here. Okay, that is series two. This line here is C2. And let me click on this one also. So that one is C3. So let me talk about this C3. You see, we selected values which will be zero, and then we selected 10 for X or eight for Y. So you can see that this line, because we selected um, higher values, then at least this line could cross these two lines. So let's say if we selected a small value like four, this line will end up here. And if you select even five, still this line will not cross here. So for us to get it, the best value is to select six and get six and above values. So that's why when we selected eight or 10, you can see that um, 10 is all the way here and eight, which is Y value is way here. So at least this line will cross the other two line and this will give us this feasible region. Feasible region will show areas that we can actually combine these three constraints to produce. So in this case, we can produce anywhere within this feasible region, meaning that it is the region where there is a possibility of producing. And this area, for instance, we cannot produce because uh, it is outside. It is outside. This area here also, it is outside where we are not using all the resources. This one also is outside here. It's also outside. We cannot produce at this area. Also, this region is not feasible because we cannot produce at this area. So the only region that we can produce, it is this region here. And we will label it as feasible region. Now, within this feasible region, we are going to find the area that or the point where we can minimize our cost or the point where we can maximize our benefit. So if our objective is to minimize cost, we will find out which that corner point that can help us to minimize cost. Obviously, it will be at this point here. And also we can look at the point where if we our objective is to maximize profit, then definitely this could be the point where we can max, maximize our profit. However, we need to find the coordinates of these two points and find out how much will be either the cost or how much will it be the maximum value. We find that actual value. So that's the, the thing that we're going to do next from here. Now, to proceed, it is very important for us to label the lines, or I can say we need to label the, the constraints. Remember, I had to click here to find out if this is series three. So why don't we label uh, these lines? And so we'll start with the first line, and then we'll go with the second and the third. So to label this, we can uh, use shapes. So click on the insert, and then you can go to the shapes and you can drop down the shapes and here we have all these different shapes that we can use. We need to use text box that will help us to actually label our lines. So I'm going to click and then I will click here 
and it have the size that I can write C1. Now, the next thing you can see, we have this line here, this line of the box. And when you put your mouse, you can see it cross. Just click and hold, then hold down Control Shift key and drag it. And then release. So you can see we have copied this and then you can actually uh, move it. You can hold this, move it here. And now you can change from C2, C1 to C2. I'm going to do the same for, oh no, that is C3. And so I'm going to do the same, copy this. We don't have to redo it again, like going to the insert shapes and select. You can do so, but all you can do is put your mouse here in this line, then click and hold and then control and shift and drag this. When you drag it outside, you can see we have copied it. And uh, the only thing you can do is uh, put it down here and that's all. So in this case, you can see that at least now we know uh, the lines here. Oh, sorry, this has to go, not there. This has to go here to show this is C2. So let me label it, change it to C2. So you can see we have const, uh, constraint one here. This line is C1. And this one is C3, let me push it. And this is constraint number two. So that's very important. Now, the next thing to do is, first of all, to establish this feasible region. However, here we have the corner points. We have, we can call this A, B, and C, or we can say A, uh, B, and C. So it all depends on how you want to label them. And therefore, I will copy this again, and I'm going to click and hold Control and Shift, and then pull it down here and release it. So I can reorganize it to this point here, and then I'm going to uh, call this A, A, and then what I can do, I can also copy this. So I'm going to click Control Shift and uh, it here, and uh, I will change this to B, sorry, not CB, but B. And uh, finally, I'm going to copy this where I'll click Control Shift and then drag it. And then I can actually move it here. And that will be point C. So now at least we have defined our corner points. So this point here is A, that is B, and that is C. However, this area is our feasible region. So let me copy again any of this and uh, click and then Control and Shift, move it out. I'm going to write feasible region. And then I can actually pick it up and bring it in here. So that is my feasible, uh, this we call it feasible region. As I said, we can produce at any point within these corner points. However, we need to find where we can either minimize our cost and where we should maximize our profit. But our objective function at this time is to minimize cost. And so we're going to find where we should um, minimize cost. You may want to highlight this feasible region. And so this is how you can do so. So all you have to do is go to the insert again, and then go to the shapes. This time we're going to select something different. We're going to select the freeform tool. And the freeform tool is actually this one here. So just select it. 
and now when you go here it is very important so you can click at this corner point here just click once and then when you click there don't do any other thing just move the mouse move it up to this point here without doing anything else and then click again at that point and then when you click there you can also move the mouse up to this point then just move the mouse when you arrive there click again and then move the mouse up to this point here make sure that you are joining it and click once and that's all so after you have joined all this area it shows the feasible region however adjust transparency so in this case we're going to right click in this box and um, go to the format shape we're going to have fill and lines but all we need to do is to deal with the fill so drop down fill you can see that we have color transparency and um, all we have to do is to create the transparency when you move this then you can see at least our feasible region now can be seen and um, this is not too much shading and so that is okay so then um, we can click here uh, then that's done so now let's find the coordinates of the extreme points and so uh, at point A we can see that um, two lines are intersecting each other that is C1 and also C2 these two lines here and now we're going to look at the equations for C1 and C2 if you can remember let me rewrite those equations here uh, and those are the constraints that we had we had 4x sorry we had 4x plus y and that was greater or equal to 12 and then uh, we had 2x this is for c1 constraint 1 and constraint 2 we had 2x plus 2y and that is less or equal to 18 and then we had constraint 3 and that is um, 4x minus 5y which is less or equal to 0 those are the constraints that we had uh, we're not coloring this and so this is what we had before and I just copy them here for our uh, reference and so in this case um, so for C1 we have 4 and uh, we have 1 that's 1 of y and so that will be greater or equal to 12 and then C2 which is 2 and 2 and that should be less or equal to 18 and then I'm uh, this one here sorry it should be 4 X and so here we have 4 and then uh, we have 5 it should be actually minus 5 so that's minus 5 and then that is 0 meaning that this one will be X that that column will be X and the other column will be Y so let me put the limits so I'm going to copy and paste there and so this one I'm going to delete should be greater or equal the other one was less or equal and here less or equal and um, so we need to find the coordinates at point A we can see that we have C1 and C2 crossing here so we're going to select C1 and C2 so all I'm going to do is to select these values I'm going to paste them 
here copy and paste there so that is point a i can just highlight it and then um we'll find uh, uh, other points a b and c so but we can see at point a we have the first line which is c1 and also we have c2 c1 and c2 let me move this out of the way so b at this point and i'll also highlight it at point b you can see we have this coordinate point uh sorry i didn't move that as well so at point b you can see line c3 and c2 crossing here and in that case we will copy c2 and c3 that will give us the coordinates at point b and uh, uh, so in this case you can see we have c2 and c3 which uh, we can copy here, this one's here so i'm gonna copy and uh, i'm going to paste them there now let's work on uh, point c you can see at this point we have two lines crossing we have c1 and c3 they are crossing here and so that means we will take c1 take c1 let me copy and paste here and then c3 so it is this one copy and paste here now let me explain why did i organize this i mean this equation like this i had to organize it this way you cannot apply functions here because uh, you can see we have four x plus y and so they are not organized so we have to create this model so that we can actually uh, work with our values themselves you can see we even separated the limits and also the constraints so now the next thing to do is to please put x here and y and then put z remember our objective function was z and so copy this as well control copy and you can also press them for b and also we can press them for c so let, sorry let me copy so we're going to put x y and, and z for a and also for b and for c um the next thing i want you to do is um these two lines uh you can give it the color so uh let's select these two lines and fill with um any color you want and this one it can be a little different color uh I can go with um, this color here and so do the same go here for z and also this z i like to use colors because they actually uh, help me to identify some of the uh, when you work with something then it becomes easier for me to identify so i like to go with the colors uh, which color did I select here? You can use colors or you may not use colors. It's up to you. Uh, not this one. Mm. I would like to go with the colors that are, are very easy. So just select any colors that will help you for me uh, these ones are okay so you can see x and y are highlighted differently and z on its own as i said you don't really need to use the colors but i prefer using the colors so that i can remember what i have done 
or separate some of the uh, things in a in a proper way. So in this case, uh, all I wanted to do is to select these two cells. When you select them, just select them. Just select these two. And the next thing you're going to do is to type equal sign. Put equal sign there like this. And then we want to do the multiplication. And we want to multiply these values, these values, with these values. And um, the way they are organized, they are in matrix form. And uh, you can see that we have uh, this matrix, which we can multiply with this. And so to multiply the matrix, all we have to do is to type matrix multiplication. So just type MM, and you'll see this function, which is matrix multiplication. So M mult, select it. You can see that we have this bracket. Now type again min verse. So M I N, and uh, you can see we have M I N verse. So M inverse. So it is matrix inverse. And so select it within this second bracket. You're going to select these values. and then close the bracket, close the bracket. So we are going to take this matrix times this values here. And so you can put the comma sign, and after putting the comma sign, then select these values. Remember to close the bracket here. Now we're going to close the bracket to this one, and so, Close the bracket. Now everything is done with this uh, function. You can see this bracket goes with this one here, and the matrix inverse, a bracket is is there. So you can see we have selected these values, and also these values. Now, the next thing I want you to hold down Control Shift keys. Control, Shift, Keys, and then click Enter. When you, you click on Enter, you can see that we have these results. So we can copy this. We can copy this and actually paste them here. And also, we can paste them here. But all we did was to copy this function and paste it here. So that means, in this case, uh, you can see we are using the same uh, function, but we are using these values uh, for point B and also for point C. So now the next thing we need to do is to find the Z at this point. So remember the objective function was to minimize Z. So let me write it here. Minimize Z 11 X plus 3 Y that it was the our objective function. And um, so in this case, I'm going to write 11 and uh, 3, meaning that this will be x, so 11x and 3y. Remember, we have to do this so that um, at least we can put these values for uh, a function. So that is our objective function. We are going to calculate or we are going to find the z values. 
So we have X and Y values. We have 1 and 8 at this point. So X and Y values are known for this point. And also X and Y for B, they are also known. They are 5 and 4. And X and Y for C, they are known. So in this case, we are going to find the Z value at this point A, where we will actually apply our X values and Y values. So I'm going to click here and put echo. So we are going to have, we're going to click 11X. So in this case, we we'll click on 11 times 1. So I'm going to put the times there and click on 1 because we know x is 1 at point A. And then we're going to plus, put this plus sign here, and uh, we will click on 3, 3y, three but we know y at this point is 8. So I will multiply that by 8. So let's find what is Z. If you enter, then we know that Z is 35. So I'm going to put equal sign, and we know that the um, we have 11x, but we know our x is 5, and also we have 3y. We know y is 4 here. So I'm going to click on the 11 times 5 plus 3 times y and y is 4 so times 4 and then I'll enter and then you can see we have 67 and finally I'm going to work on this I'll put equal sign where I'm going to click on the 11 times x my x is 2.5 so times 2.5 plus y, which is uh, 3 times y. So I'm going to click on 3 times y. y is 2. So I'm going to click there and enter. So now we're going to take these coordinate values and put them, uh, and put them in here. We are done with everything, but all we need is to bring those values up. Uh, our values here so to bring them here uh, you don't really need to because already we know the points for a B and C but just to organize yourself better I'm going to um, control shift and drag this so at this point at point a um, point A. Just to organize myself, I can say um, we have X and Y. So that will be 1 and 8. And that will give us, not equal, but I'll show it gives us 35. That's point A. And then I will control shift, I mean, I'll click control shift, copy this and bring it um, at point B here. Then I'm gonna change this. We have five and then we have four and we have 67. And then I'm gonna copy this so I'm going to click and hold, then Control and Shift, and move it here, down here. Uh, I'll organize it to point to this point C, and where I will change values to 2.5, and then uh, we have 2, and... Um, we have um, 
33.5. So this is just to organize ourselves to complete the uh, this uh, chart here. And um, but all the information is actually you can find it here. And so um, oh wow, what did I do here? Uh, let me uh, control uh, click control shift bring it up here I have no idea what happened so that point actually it was supposed to be one and it eight and then uh, we had 35 so um, so that's what actually we have now the question is where can we minimize the cost at which point at which corner point that we can minimize the z so you can see at point a we have z is 35 and uh, at point b is 67 and at point c z is 33.5 so we can actually minimize cost at point C, and that is the value. Uh, the that is the value at that point. So the minimum cost in this kind of production is thirty-three point five. That's all.